You're going to have to confirm it on your side. Okay, got it. Okay, and now I haven't really gone through to set it up to where I don't know if typically it'll automatically switch. If you're speaking, it switches back to you. Okay. Or that type of visual. I'm, I'm not 100% certain, but I think so. Okay. Okay. So now, um, now that we're recording it, again, mm -hmm. um, I'll give myself an introduction. My name is Matt, and my pen name is Matt Lambeau. And I wrote a book over the last decade out of frustration because I'm born into a portal of unconditional love. I have six siblings. My parents were in love. I was very, very blessed. Okay, so, but over the last decade through the COVID and the Trump years, I was frustrated and perplexed as to how seven kids can come from the same vagina, but see the world so differently. Yes. And I set a course because I knew that I could solve that. I knew there was a rationale behind it. And so that's what led me to write the book. And now once I've written the book, I look back at my life and I see some irony or coincidence. And that is I was basically a failure as a student. I hated learning. I hated everything about it. C's, D's, cheated my way into college. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until I believe my third year of college when I finally got my first A in a nice. class okay. and it turned out that class happened to be a class called rhetorical theory mm. which looking back means somehow innately i've had this obsession with the way the rhetoric works and the human consciousness part and the language and the communication so i i attributed back to that going wow okay so maybe it was some sort of calling i don't know what it is i didn't care about learning but for some reason i cared about human consciousness mm -hmm. so as it went on i got a degree in interpersonal communication mm -hmm. and uh again over 30 years was taking notes going this is crazy how can the world be so confusing it doesn't seem confusing to me and that ended up being uh, basically three books, uh, about 400 pages each. The first one being Humanity's Last Hope, where I believe, I'm I, again, it's none of it is my opinion. I, it's a research project where I'm drawing on authors like C.S. Lewis and George Orwell and Thomas Jefferson and all these different people that had profound wisdom by which I don't think we listen. Okay, so the first book, Humanity's Last Hope, is basically saying, listen, it comes down to a narrative. If you're not familiar with George Orwell, you need to become familiar with it because it'll help you understand the narrative. Then there's a book called The Four Agreements that talks about the impeccability of the word. And you need to yeah. understand that logic to be able to have this type of an elevated conversation about the way human consciousness works. So that's what humanity's last hope basically i'm drawing the conclusion that humanity's last hope unless we're going to end up the way the the rapture and the book of revelations predicts global domination and a slide into the abyss okay the only way that can be stopped is through a narrative a new narrative in my humble opinion so that's humanity's last hope saying our last hope is to get a narrative by which we all agree and we're speaking based on the same words okay the second book that i wrote is called the war against evil and this one goes into detail documenting the central powers of this world how it is not complicated this world is controlled by a central force of demons these people are no different than adolf hitler with the exception of a smile and adolf hitler was more less clandestine about his objective but you have to be clear it is about world domination and they have no interest in the well-being of the human being now put a smile behind these people and again i think that can be proven that we have to operate with listen what are the forces of evil what are the names of these people what are we up against now the next book okay and again i go into that book in detail with the illuminati and all these things we hold to be untrue but the evidence supports they take it they they're, they're very credible all right the third book is called the battle for the money hmm. and this is where it goes in to show listen the way this world works is all about this little thing called currency it's flowing through each of us those that control the most currency also have the most power and it turns out the people who control the most currency right now are not freedom fighters. They're fighting for control. And so the third one shows how you do not have to be Adolf Hitler and use weapons to win back this word, this world. It could be done using words and currency. You bankrupt them 
You don't need to defeat them with weapons. You need to defeat them with words and bankrupt the flow of their currency. That's it. That's my agenda in a nutshell. So now the beauty is you're a sensible thinker, so you can tell me if I'm delusional. Everyone has a right to their opinion of how things are. Absolutely. And the thing is, is I come across bombastic and I come across authoritative, but I truly believe that everything that's coming from my mouth hasn't been substantiated by me. It's been substantiated by Thomas Jefferson or by Aristotle. It's just we don't listen to these people. You know, so um, and now if you're cool with it, since we're going down this path, do you mind if I share my screen? Sure, go ahead. OK, let me do this. OK, so this is it in a nutshell. Um, if you go to my homepage, I'm basically saying, listen, should we unite our minds to create a better world? And I believe that truly that you can be on this planet and again, I'm going to use words because those are the words we use to define things. So like a term like conservative or liberal or Christian or Muslim, these are all terms, words, letters and sequence that we use to form impressions in our mind. OK, so when I use a term like liberal or conservative, I'm saying let's go into the debate and you can see you can see my screen, right? What the earth is. Glow. OK, so below where now this is our boardroom. We're having a conversation from above and we're looking down we're going, listen, okay, all these little human beings are using words to describe things. We got Democrats, Republicans, we got socialists, we got all these different words. But inside all those words and ideas, there are certain things that supersede opinion. Okay, an example would be the founding fathers said, we hold these truths to be self-evident. That's the founding fathers saying on this side of the globe, there is England. They've got their subjective truth, their subjective paradigm, their own indoctrination, their own dogma. And that is true for them. Here we have the Americans and their dogma is also true. It's called subjective truth by which all human beings are entitled. We hold these truths to supersede all human opinion. And that is we're created equal. We've got inalienable rights. That supersedes the opinions on the globe. Now, where the founding fathers went wrong is by suggesting that we're all equal. The accurate, uh, more accurate uh, uh, would have been, we hold these truths to be self-evident because nobody is created equal. We are 100% unique. Therefore, we are entitled to certain inalienable rights. That being number one, freedom. Okay, so that's my goal is to lift the mind. Now, if you go to, uh, and in doing this, it's saying, listen, here's a free book. If you want, anybody wants to read the origins of this thing, feel free, I'll send you a copy. It's basically saying, I, I did research in, and there's it's filled with quotes and all these different things, but it's basically me drawing this, this conclusion that says, we can take, all of the information in the world and as human beings collectively we can decide on what we think is true and what's most important so in other words the facts aren't of the divine the facts are humanity's best collective attempt to describe that which we believe is unmistakably true and in doing that okay and here's a couple of reviews from my uh, the editors that helped me wrote the book but in doing that i start with the top 10 facts and if you read this, it's saying some of the logic that I used to get there that's saying, listen, uh, we need a starting point. We, we, yes, we all disagree, but at some point there has to be a starting point or it's complete. It's a complete circle. We're, we're in different narratives. So anyways, you can read some of the logic. The top 10 facts is basically saying, can we prioritize them? So here, this is the intriguing part. Here's the 10 command. Basically, I'm just reaching. We can reach into any of the words that are written on this planet. All the human beings are dead. All that remains are the words. And this is me saying, all right, what's the, what words are out there in a list of 10 that we seem to think are relevant? These are the two I could find. 10 commandments in the Bill of Rights. If you look at the words in here, the Bill of Rights is basically scared little souls pleading for their freedom 
while surrounded by demons. Look at this. No quartering of soldiers. You can't put us in jail without. I mean, this this 10 Bill of Rights is so insulting about the evil on this planet. We hold this thing with virtue. And it's it it's basically saying these thieves and demons cannot come into our home. That's the value of those words. The Ten Commandments are freaking worthless. Now, if you look at the 1010 10 facts, human love, human disagreement, human logic, these things are walking the mind through what they need to know at the outset of this journey. And if they're inaccurate, according to your paradigm, which is unique to you, we need to change them so they're accurate. So you could give this to any of your kids and say, this is the way you start your life. Guess what? There's called human perception. Number six, we are conscious souls, which is spiritual energy, navigating a lucid dream, which is this physical energy. And there's clear purpose for our endeavor. That's true. Every kid should know that. Okay, and that's more valuable than a Ten Commandment to explain. There are two types of energy. Your conscious soul cannot be extinguished. It was alive before you were born, and it will be alive after you die. That is proven. You can choose not to believe it, but that is creating a delusional reality by which you will live. Anyways, that was a lot real quick. So anyways, there's the top 10 facts. Now, if you go to this page, the logic... I'm explaining how I get there. I'm saying, listen, the facts is an acronym for finding answers that confirm truth about selfishness. It's all about human selfishness, okay? Selfishness, and it's, again, your conscious soul was alive before you were human. It will not be extinguished. That begs the question, why are you here? You came here to be a human being. The evidence suggests you came for the difficulty. You're from the light. You chose to come into hell, into the darkness for the pain and suffering that it would deliver so that your conscious soul can move closer to the light. Okay, again, we can talk about that. And the, the, the dissension from that idea is what's important. That idea is a starting point of which my research concluded. Now, if you go down, the logic talks about... Is there a threshold between ignorant and informed? Yeah, there is. And the ignorant are dangerous to your liberties. Trust me. Okay, top 10 facts. Now, here's the logic to elevate the mind. If you look at the Bible, the first sentence in Genesis talks about how the world was spoken into existence. If you look at the physics of it, if you couple that of UFO intelligence or what be it, whatever words you can use to derive your intelligence, it means that that first sentence in the Bible is irrefutably true. That's the way it works. That's the way your human spirit is navigating this energy. What separates you from other animals is you can use the spoken word to manage your energy. So it starts with the Bible, then the four agreements helps the mind understand the way this endeavor works from above. And then George Orwell. And now that's the logic. Okay, here, this next step. Did I lose you? Uh-oh. 